6 through 12. We're going to invite you to the um, chapel area for Pastor Dan and your youth church. Give our youth a great big hand. These are our leaders of tomorrow. As you turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, the book of Luke, the 19th chapter, the 19th chapter, the 19th chapter. 19th chapter of Luke. Starting in verse 35, in verse 35, would you repeat after me? They brought the coat to Jesus, then throwing their coats on its back, they helped Jesus get on. As he rode, the people gave him a grand welcome, throwing their coats on the street. Right at the crest, where Mount Olives began its descent, everybody, the whole crowd of disciples burst into enthusiastic praise. Say, neighbor, do you have any praise? Overall, repeat, overall, the mighty works they had witnessed. They said, blessed is he who comes, the king in God's name. All is well in heaven. Glory in the highest places. Now, some Pharisees from the crowd told him, Teacher, get your disciples under control. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor, are you under control today? Turn to your neighbor behind you and say, Neighbor, are you out of control or under control on Palm Sunday? I hope you said, I'm not under control. <laughs> Verse 40 says in the Message Bible, Eugene Peterson, but he said, repeat, but he said, if they kept quiet, if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately start to shout in praise. But he said, if they kept quiet, the stones would do it for them shouting praise amen turn to your neighbor and say neighbor do you do what you do everywhere else inside of the church say neighbor why you act out everywhere else and say neighbor why do you act out everywhere else and you become so sedate on Sunday morning Say, neighbor, why you get all out of whack everywhere else? And you're so cool, calm, and collective on Sunday morning. Just turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you think they need to take their ties off or remove their heels? Hello, ladies. I see your shoes are off and halfway off up under the... Share, you're not fooling nobody. But you'll get them on before church is out. Amen. You know, let me ask you a question. What is it that we have in common with the world? What is it that we have in common with the world? So often we say that we are not supposed to be of the world. We're supposed to be in the world. That we're not supposed to conform to the world, but rather we're called to transform the world. But the truth of that, the truth of the matter is, we do have some connectors, we do have some similarities to the world. For example, there is something that we do that folk do downtown. It's loud, it's boisterous, it's uncalled for sometime, and sometimes it's even distracting. What is that that is loud and boisterous that we see elsewhere? We do it whenever LeBron James hits a triple-double. 
or even when he closes out a game like only LeBron James can close out a game with. We see it down there where the Cleveland Indians play Jose Rivera's, I think his name is. We see it in other places. In fact, there was a few of us who probably saw this thing yesterday, Saturday night, at a place around the corner from our church. Whenever a certain slot machine <laughs> makes a certain clanging noise, all of a sudden, we become really expressive. Do you know what it is yet? Uh, you see it sometimes when parents at the end of the year, after traveling with their children for 12 years through school, and all of a sudden during commencement, when they see their child finally crossing the stage, all of a sudden, you see them doing this one thing. What, what, what is it that they are, they are doing? And you see it at high school football games, when the quarterback throws a touchdown down field. You see this particular thing. In fact, Marilyn, I saw it the other day. I know that I'm not supposed to look at certain kinds of pictures because, after all, I'm a preacher. Uh, but even preachers have this thing called curiosity, and so every now and then I try to find out what you're looking at. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I know that's right. <laughs> you know, you know, you do not want a pastor who is not relevant. You want a pastor who is relevant and understand all the sinfulness that you are. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but, but I saw it. I saw it. I saw it on Soul Train when they were coming down. Uh, some of you don't know what Soul Train is, but I saw those people dancing and coming down the center. Why, they look just like y'all. And all of a sudden, when certain kinds of singers came across the stage, The Temptation, Gladys Knight, and the other folk, I saw this thing there. And what this thing is called is praise and worship. The truth of the matter is, there are some of us who praise and worship King James. Uh, why, we would fall apart if we found out that he had left here uh, to go to uh, another city. Because the truth of the matter is, we, we sometimes worship uh, LeBron James and, and, and the Cavaliers. We, we sometimes praise them. In fact, I was down there at a game not long ago, and I said to myself, if I could just reduplicate this atmosphere, turn off all the lights in the church and have fire to come out from the heavens themselves, and then ask everybody to stand up and give your loudest cheer. Uh, but I'm afraid that there will be some people who will all of a sudden look at me and say, uh, Reverend, that's ignorant. You know, folk ought not to act like that. That's church. People ought to be quiet in church. Be silent in church. But, but I said to myself, there's something different about people on Sunday morning than it is when they go down uh, to the Q Arena when the Cavaliers start to play and don't let LeBron James just walk beside them. They just go crazy. And then they got all of this stuff on the screen that says, scream! <laughs> it's no more than praise and worship. The difference is in praise and worship, it's about the object of praise and worship and the subject of praise and worship. You know, the only difference is, is who you are praising and worshiping. Uh, have I got a witness in the house? Uh, when you come to church on Sunday morning, you ought not to think about all of those other things that have occurred in the world, but rather you ought to think on Jesus. You ought to come here on Sunday morning because the Lord has been good to you. Have I got a witness? Yes, you may have had some problems. Yes, you may have had some trials and tribulations. Yes, you may have had some mountains that seem incrossable and some bridges that you never thought you were going to cross over. But at the end of the day, you made it through. And that's enough to thank God about. Have I got a witness in the house? You ought to just thank God that somehow God made a way out of no way and somehow through all of that mess, God turned around and turned your mess into a miracle. 
have I got a witness in the house? Is there one person who would just shout and say, God's been good to me? Is there one person who woke up this morning yet in your right mind, yet with a reasonable portion of health and strength, and you can shout and say, God has been good to me? Is there anybody here know they should have been destroyed a long time ago, but somehow God's been good to you? Can you give him a two-minute shout or two-second shout? The old folks said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would we be? But David shouted this out. He said, hey, y'all, let the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed, those who have been brought out, those who have been delivered, those who have been dealt with, those who have been helped, those who have been worked through and with. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord. Just give high five to five people and say, you're the redeemed of the Lord. Come on, you be seated. He says, who he hath redeemed from the enemy. And can I tell you something real quick? You were created for praise. If you don't know what your job is, your, your main job is to praise God. I wish I had a shout out there. You were created for praise, and the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people, which means that when you act out what you have on the inside, don't nobody have to make you do nothing. You don't have to have a choir. You don't have to have musicians. But rather, you can praise God all by yourself. In fact, the truth of the matter is, some of my best praising is when I ain't got nobody around me. When I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me, it makes me want to shout. Now, the reason why I want to shout because I know what the Lord is doing with me. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, that's a personal experience. And I'm sorry you can't always get inside of my experience. I can't always get inside your experience. That's why on Sunday morning, I cannot challenge your praise because I don't know your problems and how the Lord has brought you through and brought you out. But you were created as a praiser. Praise is not just what I do. Praise is who I am. Praise is who I am. And because that's who I am, that's what I do. You talking about you don't know what you're called to do in this world. I'll tell you what you're, what you're called to do. You're called to wake up in the morning and say, thank you, God, for watching over me all night long, for keeping danger at bay. I'll tell you what you've been called to do. Stop in the afternoon not to have a coffee break, but to have a praise break. With all these fools around me, thank you, God, I didn't kill somebody today. Have I got a witness? When I go home at nighttime, I say, thank you. I made it on the eight hours with all these crazy folk around me. And then when I go to bed at night, I have to thank God because I'm living with a fool next to me. And somehow I made it through all of that. Oh, yes. I'm going to get to the text. Hey!
what the that was the Palm Sunday group that was doing that the text says that when Jesus comes riding on a donkey, the foal of a donkey, young donkey, that never had been ridden before, a coat, the Bible says that all of a sudden the folk began to do what, Leon? You need to write this down now. Uh, there is what you call a halal praise. Say a halal praise. A uh, halal uh, praise is a praise where you get rid of your pride. A and you ain't embarrassed about any of the thing you do when it comes down to praise. You see, some people won't praise God in church because they think that they're going to get embarrassed. When the truth of the matter is, it's not the shouter who ought to be feeling embarrassed, it's the sitter. It's the sitter because the Bible says, I just told you, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord. And, and then the Bible said, let everything that have breath now, if you're still yet alive, you ought to be what? Praise. There is what is called the halal praise, which is a praise where you ain't got no shame in your game. We used to say if something hits you from the top of your head and descend down to the sole of your feet, you ought to get up and shout it out. You see, the problem is we will get rid of a whole lot of opiates and a whole lot of opium and a whole lot of drugs if folk would just learn on Sunday morning, just take time out and just shout it out, just start to praising God, just start to lifting him up, just start to shout. That's a, ain't no shame in my game. I'll shout up here, I'll, I'll dance up here because there was a brother by the name of David and the text says that when the ark of the covenant came back to Jerusalem David got so happy still he started shouting and he had what is called the airport in front of him and when he had the airport in front of him everything started rising with him y'all get it y'all get it the airport started and, 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 and all the body parts in him started rising also that's in the text and Mikhail said hey shut it down shut it up you are embarrassing me uh, David and David said if you keep on talking I'm going to I'm gonna dance my pants off and you will see everything what was that that was no shame in his game and when people look at you all crazy you should turn to them and say I ain't the one crazy fool you are the one crazy you don't even know how to thank God when God's been better to you than you've been to your own crazy self you ought to be shouting all over the place in the stuff that God brought you through have I got a witness in the house Halal, a halal praise, and then there's a kawa praise. Say kawa, kawa praise. And that means to dance in circular or wheel fashion. The Bible says that sometimes it's about dancing in a circle. We do it because it reminds us of that song that says, every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Every time I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He 
keeps on blessing me every time you turn around he keeps on blessing you every time you turn around he keeps on Keeps on blessing you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He keeps on blessing you. And, and so that's a kawa. Say kawa praise. And, and the truth of the matter is, you know, uh, we have become so Americanized in our praise. You know, we've become so 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 Americanized in our praise and. And, and you go everywhere around the country and people know how to praise the Lord. Uh, but in America, you know, we have this kind of sit back, relax, let everybody else do it for you. And so when you leave out of the church, you have not felt nothing because you have not given anything. And so you waited for the choir to dance you up and to shout you up. You better not depend upon the choir because one Sunday they just might not have it together. You better depend upon what you think about because uh, the old English word for thanks is the word think. And what the old English people were trying to do was to get people to think about what God is doing. And so when they used the word thank, it came from thinking. They said to themselves, the more I think about certain kinds of things, the more I would be thankful. Uh, the other day I got a little agitated about some things and I said to myself I'm frustrated I'm angry I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired is there anybody in the house like that every now and then or am I just alone but then God said to me he said start thinking about not what I ain't done hmm that's bad English but think about what I have done don't think about what you ain't got. Mm, that's bad English. Think about what you do have. Don't think about who's gone on over to the other side of Jordan. Think about who I still have yet in the land of the living. And the more I began thinking, the more I began thinking, and the more I started thinking, the more I started praising God, and somehow King Jesus wrote all my burdens away. That's how it works. If you start to think more about what God is doing, hmm. Well, there's another praise called Yoda praise. Yoda praise is about lifting up holy hands to the Lord. Now, now this lifting up holy hands unto the Lord is a, is a, is a matter of praise. Uh, so they were dancing. They were turning around. They were doing all these other kind of circular praise. Uh, but then they were also uh, doing the Shabbat and they were shouting. But they were also uh, doing the Yoda praise, which means extend your hand. And so sometimes liberation comes with just the action of your body. But now if you're going to extend your hand, you can't be cute about it. Turn, or, turn to somebody and say, you learned how to be cute about it. And when somebody tell you, stop praising the Lord, you, you do this here. Uh, and then you wonder why ain't nothing hit you. Because <laughs> you ain't did it right. You see that Yoda, that Yoda praise means to extend your hand like a baby extending his arms and his hand towards a mama as if he wants the mama to pick him up. Sometimes you've got to learn when you go through trials and tribulation to extend your hand to a father as if you're trying to beg for him to pick you up. And then the baby does a certain kind of holding their hand when they want some kind of milk or food and they kind of lift their hands up as if to say, Mama, give me something to eat or wrap your arms of protection around me. Lift me up and sometimes you've got to do a Yoda praise. You cannot have any shame in your game and you've got to lift it up as if it's only you and God all by yourself. Have a God to say Yoda praise. The Bible says that Paul talked to Timothy and said to Timothy Timothy I would that all men would lift up holy hands unto the Lord why did he talk about men because he knew we were so strong he knew that we were so chauvinistic he knew that we don't allow nobody to see our weaknesses and so therefore Paul said to Timothy these guys that are filled with pride who want to sit there with their legs all crossed on Sunday morning with their hands folded as if they've done everything by themselves because they want to be strong and with full of strength he said I would that they would let go sometime and let God sometime and throw up holy hands 
it to the Lord. When the policeman comes and, and the first thing he says to you is throw up your hands. Why do you throw up your hands? Because you throw up your hands because it's a sign of surrender. And what God wants from you is for you to sometime surrender yourself unto him. You surrender you to him and he'll make you a new creation. All things will pass away and all things will become new. You've got to learn to surrender on Sunday morning. You've got to learn to surrender on Sunday morning. You've got to learn. Say Yoda. But then there's a Gawa. A Gawa praise. A Gawa praise. A Gawa. Say Gawa. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, now the word gawa means twisted or plaited. And so, when I was a kid, I used to watch my mama plait my sister's hair. She would twist it all together. And so the word gawa praise is a praise when people are so connected that their praise starts to intertwine and become twisted together and they start to bumping into each other and I've yet to see a gawa praise in the church lately so maybe sometime God either does one or two things he either sends us some trials and tribulations and other times he sends us blessings but he would love for us to have gawa Praise, where this side of the church is running to that side of the church and that side of the church is running to that side of the church. I, I keep telling folk that sometimes in order to feel the presence of God, all you have to move, do is move away from the presence of certain people. <laughs> you, you see, because, because emotions are contagious. If you're in the church hanging around cold, dead folk, your feet are going to get cold bottom up but now if you find that pocket inside of the church where sister so and so don't mind shouting and praising the Lord and lifting up their holy hands and turning around in circles. When you find that place when a person is in there talking to God by themselves as if God is standing right next to them. When you find that person when the church starts to sing in certain kinds of songs all of a sudden that person is all up in the air. That might be the hot spot and sometimes all you got to do to have a better service is not to complain about who sung or who didn't sung. All you have to do is throw up one of your fingers and walk away from that side of the church and move over to that little hot po pocket of, of praise and all of a sudden you decide and find out things have shifted in your worship experience you got to find people who really know that God can do what no other power on earth can do you've got to find folk who understand what gratitude is all about you've got to find that pocket where there is those people who understand that the Lord has brought me through that the Lord has delivered me. You've got to find that pocket where the person may not be able to sing all the words to amazing grace but can at least say the first part of the song amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I'm I once was blind but now I, you, you got to find the hot spot inside of the church but can I tell you something uh, the reason why some of us can't praise and this is all praise in the text there the reason why some of us can't praise is because we confuse prayer with praise we think praise and prayer is the same thing and so some of us come up to praise when we should be praying and some of us do praying and forget about the praising can I help you out say help me out pastor you see prayer is about requesting something it's about asking God for something. And praise is the overflow from believing that I walk by faith and not by sight. And that which I'm hoping for is already in God's mind the right now. In other words, praise come after prayer. When I ask God for something, I'm gonna praise him afterwards because my assumption is that God has already 
answered my prayers and that God's going to work it out even in the vast and in the mind of God it's already done and so when I finish praying I ought to get up and start praying it's about asking God for some wonderful things I'm asking him for love I'm asking him for, for compassion I'm asking him for forgiveness and all of those other kinds of things but after I ask him I ought to learn how to dance you know, when I used to go to the store down there at People Corner or the corner pet, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the corner store in Cincinnati, I would go there to get me a piece of candy. But I didn't wait till I got to the store to start dancing after I got my candy. But rather, I went to the store. I went to the store just dancing my way to the store because I had a dime in my pocket and I knew I was going to get what I asked for. Well, I stopped by to tell you sometimes you ought to praise your way in the beginning and then praise your way out of it at the end of it. Have I got a witness in the house? Is there anybody in the house want to praise God for something they've been asking God to do? Something they've been asking God to give? Then you ought to learn, can you stand on your feet for about two seconds and give him some praise for what you're asking him? to do all right let's go home stand on your feet and some of us confuse praise with worship worship is about saying God you're worthy it's about who God is and so I worship God because of who he is. He's a rock in a weary land. He's a way out in the way. Bring me down. He's a friend in an unfriendly way. He's the almighty God. He's in control of everything. That's why I got to come to church on Sunday because I want him to keep controlling everything around me. He is omnipotent. And so I worship him because he's omnipotent. He has all power in the palm of his hand. I worship him because I know he's everywhere. He's, he's omniscient, he knows everything. He's omnipresent, he's everywhere. And so I worship him, but the real word for worship in the original language is to kiss. Watch this. You better not kiss everybody. And, and if you kiss somebody, it says that you are in relationship with them. What do I do on Sunday morning? I'll close. I come to church to kiss God. I come to church to tell him I love him. I come to kiss him because he's good to me all the time. And all the time, God is good. I come to kiss him because on Calvary he died for my sins and he didn't even know me then. I kiss him because on Sunday morning Easter this man is not in the grave any longer but the Father has taken him out of the grave and he walks with me and he talks with me. I kiss him because when I'm feeling alone I have the Holy Spirit with me. Holy Spirit guides me when I feel a little depressed the Holy Spirit takes me out of my depression when I don't understand what is going on the Holy Spirit gives me calm even in the midst of my fear and so on Sunday morning I want to embrace him I worship him I want to kiss him but I can only kiss him if I'm in relationship with him there is only one relationship you can have you must have it through Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. We have one thing in common here in this room, and that is that everyone in this room is going to die. When you die, your body will go to the grave. But the Bible says that your soul will remain somewhere else. David understood that and he wrote it in the 23rd Psalm. He says, Yea, though I walk through the valley called the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, 
is with me. He says also these words, that when my soul gets to that point, he says, thou restoreth my soul. And so at the end of the day, you have to know whether or not your soul is going to be restored by God into that eternal place. And the only way it can be restored is that what happens on Calvary and what happens on cemetery ground Easter Sunday morning occurs. You've got to confess him as your Lord and Savior. As you bow your heads in a word of thanks unto God, just tell God and talk to God right now. Just say to God, God, I'm never going to let anyone stop me from praising you. I don't need stones to praise for me. And I'm going to do all kinds of praise. Commit to that. And I guarantee you, 